to sleep. A long time ago, back in Babylon, there was a king named Darius. He was smart and called 120 people to help him rule well. The king chose among these people, three of them to be in charge. One of the three was called Daniel and King Darius was very fond of him. The others were jealous of Daniel and started plotting something to cause trouble between him and the king. They tried to find some kind of mistake, but they couldn't find anything bad about Daniel as he was faithful to the king in everything that he did. Daniel prayed to God three times a day with his window open. Also, he was careful and smart and always did the best he could in everything. The jealous leaders made a new law that said everyone should only pray to King Darius. Anyone who disobeyed would be thrown into the lion's den. The new law signed by the king did not make Daniel change what he always did. So he continued praying to God three times a day at his window. The enemies rushed to tell the king this, and so he had no choice but to arrest Daniel, as the law had to be obeyed by all. Daniel was sentenced to die in the lion's den. But before he was thrown there, King Darius said to him, Your God, whom you continually serve, will deliver you. The king couldn't even sleep that night, and as soon as it dawned, he ran to the lion's den. King Darius cried out, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve been able to deliver you from the lions? Maybe he didn't expect an answer, but Daniel responded, O king, my God has sent his angel and has shut the lions' mouths so that they do me no harm. Also, king, I have done nothing wrong to you. The king was delighted and overjoyed and ordered Daniel to be taken out of there. King Darius knew that God had delivered Daniel and wrote a letter asking everyone to worship God. Daniel was saved and was very successful. Our God is a great big God, little friends. He even closes the lion's mouths to save us because he loves us and knows us well. When we follow his commandments and we are in his hands, we will always be okay. Shh. Time to sleep. Peter, James, and John in a sailboat. One day, Peter went fishing in the Sea of Galilee. He threw the net and couldn't catch any little fish. He threw the net again and nothing. This happened all night long. He tried many times, but the net always came back empty. Peter, James, John, and other fishermen friends were so tired, so tired, that they gave up fishing and started washing the net to leave. Jesus, who was passing by them, saw what they were doing. So he got into the boat and began to teach his commandments to the crowd that was also there. When he finished preaching, Jesus told Peter to go with his little boat to the deepest part of the sea and cast his net. Peter explained to Jesus that he had been doing this all night and had not been able to catch any fish. But even though he was tired and discouraged, Peter obeyed. So Peter, James, and John went out to the sea and cast the net in search for fish. When they realized it, the net started to rip from so many fish that they caught. Hallelujah! They were very happy and surprised at what happened. They thanked the Lord and apologized for their lack of faith. After this miracle, 
everyone left their boats and began to follow Jesus. Shh. Time to sleep. A long time ago in Egypt, Pharaoh gave a very bad order. He asked that all baby boys, children of the Hebrews, be thrown into the river. Miriam was Moses' oldest sister, and like a good sister, she always took very good care of him. To protect her little brother from the evil king, she put Moses in a basket and left him on the bank of a river. The basket traveled a long way along the river until it reached the king's daughter, who wanted to take care of the child. Worried, Miriam followed everything that was happening and saw that her little brother was safe. Moses grew up in Pharaoh's palace. When he was an adult, God used him to save the Hebrews who suffered so much in slavery. When the Hebrews were almost able to flee from Pharaoh, there was a great sea that prevented them from passing. However, God blessed them, opened the sea, and everyone passed. Hallelujah! With such a blessing, Moses and all the Hebrews rejoiced greatly. Even Miriam, who took a tambourine, and along with other women, began to play and dance, praising the Lord with great joy. To sleep. A long time ago, back in Egypt, there was a very evil king. It was Pharaoh, who did not like the Hebrew people, because they worshipped God. So the king began to mistreat them and made them slaves. One day, Pharaoh gave a very bad order. He asked that all baby boys, children of the Hebrews, be thrown into the river. A certain family, hoping to save their little boy, put him in a little basket and left him on the bank of a river. The basket, with the baby in it, traveled a long way along the river, until it reached the Pharaoh's daughter, who asked her father to keep the child. The king's family took the little boy and named him Moses. He grew up in the king's palace. However, he saw how the Hebrews, who were slaves, suffered. To defend those people, he did something that displeased the king, and he had to flee so he wouldn't be punished. As he fled, Moses ended up in a land called Midian and began tending sheep. While caring for the animals in the field, he saw something very strange. A small bush was on fire, but it didn't burn. As he approached it, he heard the voice of God calling him. God told Moses that he knew how much the people of Egypt suffered there and that he wanted to save them, taking them to a great place. Moses, obeying God, confronted Pharaoh and asked to release the Hebrews, but Pharaoh did not accept. So God punished the king until he freed the people. After that, Pharaoh freed the slaves, and they began to travel to the Promised Land. On the way, Pharaoh and his soldiers were approaching them and wanted to enslave them again. Just ahead, there was a great sea, so Moses and the Hebrews could not continue on their way. But God, with his great power, opened the great sea, and the people managed to pass on dry land. Pharaoh and his soldiers also tried to pass, but the sea closed. Moses was obedient and very brave to face Pharaoh, and God protected, cared for, and freed the Hebrew people. Shh. Time to
to sleep. Once upon a time, there was a very rich man named Zacchaeus. He was a tax collector, but he wasn't fair. He charged more than he should have, and that's how he made so much money. He knew the commandments of God and knew that he was doing things that were not pleasing to the Lord. One day, Zacchaeus heard that Jesus was going to pass close to where he was, and he wanted very much to go see him. However, Zacchaeus was very small and could not see Jesus in the crowd. But his desire to see Jesus was so big, so big, that he climbed a tree and waited for the Lord to pass by. When Jesus passed, he saw that man on top of that tree and asked him to come down because he would go to his house. Zacchaeus was so happy that he came down quickly and received Jesus with so much joy. Some people in the crowd criticized Zacchaeus and told Jesus that he was an evil man. But Zacchaeus, repenting, gave half of his goods to the poor and changed his attitude. Jesus seeing this said to Zacchaeus, Today salvation has come to this house. Zacchaeus repented of his mistakes, changed his attitude, and therefore was saved. Phew! Hallelujah! Jesus is merciful, little friends, and his love goes beyond our mistakes. And despite everything that we do, the Lord's will is for us to be saved. When we know God, our lives are transformed. We just need to want to have a true encounter with him and walk according to his commandments. Just like Zacchaeus, may we also come to seek the presence of God, repent of our sins, and have a life that pleases the Father. Shh. Time to sleep. A long time ago, in the city of Saddam and Gomorrah, people were very bad. They did things that did not please God. Therefore, the Lord was very sad, to the point of wanting to destroy the cities. But before doing so, he remembered a nice man who also lived in Saddam with his family. That man was Lot. So that he would not be destroyed with the city, God sent two angels to ask him to leave the region with all of his family. The two men said to Lot, Do you have anyone else here? Sons-in-law, sons, or daughters, or anyone else in the city who belongs to you? Get them out of here. When the Lord told Lot to leave Sodom, he resisted. But the angels, who looked like men, took Lot and his family by the hand and put them outside of the city. Arriving there, the angels of the Lord guided Lot to run to another city, and also told them that they could not look back. When he hesitated, the men grasped his hand and the hands of his wife and of his two daughters and led them safely out of the city, for the Lord was merciful to them. As soon as they had brought them out, one of them said, Flee for your lives. Don't look back and don't stop anywhere in the plain. And just as the angel said, they began to run, and soon afterward the cities were destroyed. However, after a while, Lot's wife disobeyed the Lord's orders and looked back. As a result of disobedience, she became a pillar of salt. God is a good father, and like a good father, he also gives us orders and direction of what to do. 
and when we are obedient to his word, we receive the Lord's blessings and live a peaceful life. Furthermore, obeying the Lord is a proof of love, as it is written in John 14, 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. Shh. Time to sleep. Once upon a time, there was a boy named Samuel. Even before he was born, he was already very special to his mother, Anna. She had a dream of having children, but she couldn't get pregnant. After much prayer, God blessed her and she became pregnant. As soon as little Samuel was born, his mother consecrated him to the Lord. Samuel grew up in the house of God and ministered with priest Eli. One night, when he was still very small, everyone was already laying down, and God called him, Samuel. So, very obedient, Samuel thought it was Eli and ran to ask what had happened. However, Eli said that he didn't call him, and so Samuel went back to sleep. After some time, Samuel continued to hear someone call him by name. He went to the priest, and once again, he said that he hadn't called him. This happened again, so Eli told Samuel to answer that voice as it could be God. And so it happened. When the Lord called Samuel for the fourth time, the boy immediately replied, Speak, for your servant is listening. After that, Samuel listened to what the Lord had to say to him and became a great prophet. Shh. Time to sleep. Once upon a time, there was a boy named David. He his father Jesse and his seven brothers lived in the countryside. David was the youngest and every day he helped his daddy take care of the sheep. In his spare time, he liked to dance, jump, shout, and play the harp. During that time, God was not pleased with King Saul and so he was preparing a new successor. God sent a prophet, whose name was Samuel, to the house of the boy David, for the new king would come out of there. Papa Jesse asked to call his children, but he didn't call David, because he thought the chosen one would be one of the eldest. After Samuel saw the seven sons, he felt that the new king would be none of these, and asked Papa Jesse if all the brothers were there. Jesse said that the boy David, who was the youngest, was out in the field, tending the sheep. The prophet asked to call him, and as soon as he saw David, God said, Rise and anoint him. This is the one. At that time, the Israelites were at war with the Philistines, who lived in neighboring lands. The best Philistine warrior was a very strong and very tall man, the giant Goliath. Everyone in the army was afraid to fight him, but David was very brave and volunteered. King Saul then said, You can't fight him, David. You are still very young, and the giant Goliath is very strong. David replied to the king, A very big bear and a fierce lion tried to take one of my father's sheep. I ran, took the little sheep out of their mouths, and saved it. God rescued me from a lion and a bear. He will protect me from this giant, Goliath, too. Hearing this, King Saul agreed and put his own armor on David and handed over his sword. David was so small that he couldn't walk with the heavy armor on top of him. So he took everything off and took only his slingshot and five pebbles that he picked up in a river. 
when the great Goliath saw little David, he laughed and scoffed. But still, David was not afraid. He knew that God is the Lord of hosts and that he was on his side. So David ran and put a stone in his slingshot and made a clean shot, knocking down and defeating Goliath. King Saul was very impressed with what had happened and with David's courage. And so he made him commander of the army. David honored and obeyed God. He was a great warrior and a great king. After hearing this very awesome story, it's time to sleep. Close your eyes and have sweet dreams. Until next time.